Love and Hip Hop Season 5, Episode 4, Blackmail. Now, we know where Blackmail came from. That motherfucking Hosseline Hernandez, bitch. She is back in fucking town, and she is back to wreak motherfucking havoc, okay? She is back to wreak havoc on these bitches that she calls them, y'all. Y'all know she considers herself to be the queen motherfucking B in this Love and Hip Hop Atlanta game, okay? She she considers herself to be the queen motherfucking B, so she is back to wreck motherfucking shop so the whole blackmail name we know that where that shit came from if you have seen this episode now it starts off with it's still with scrap and tiara and tommy and them they they having their little um shin diggies and all this shit and they arguing and shit like that and you know tommy decides she wants to walk away because you know she basically are, I, both of them pretty much know that scrap is full of shit at this point okay you but they should both know that he's full of shit so it ends right there Stevie J is in this uh, this jewelry store, and then we see the queen be herself walk in, Miss Jocelyn Hernandez. I love Jocelyn. I know some people don't like her. They feel like she's just too fucking extra, but I like Jocelyn. So she walks in, and Stevie J is basically saying the reason why they're at this jewelry store is because he basically has to show Jocelyn his appreciation for agreeing to leave L.A. and come back to Atlanta. And of course, while they're there looking over the rings, he decides to tell her, okay, that me Mimi not only is in a relationship, but Mimi has a girlfriend. And of course, Jocelyn, girl, she had to she had to come out with that motherfucking shit. Oh, she remember that night I was all up in that Punani, girl. She remember that night I was all up in that Punani. That's some, ain't that some old ranker dank ass shit? And I just sat there and th threw threw bowls with your motherfucking ass. You didn't sat there and pulled out my hair, broke my nails, and all of a sudden I'm laying down in the bed with you and my baby daddy having a threesome. Maybe Jocelyn did turn her ass out, y'all. Rashida having this family meeting at her at her uh, store press. Now, I know a couple of people who, who have been in press, and they have said that Rashida, every time they went there, Rashida was there. Either Rashida was there or her mother was there. So, I guess that part ain't really scripted. Rashida really do be up in press, y'all. She really honestly and truly do. Because, like I said, people in my personal life have been to Atlanta, gone into press, and Rashida was there. So... And she's a very, very cool person, but she's having a meeting with her family at press, basically to, you know, set down the the the, the rules for the store. Number one, ain't no eating on the flow like, you know, Mama Rashida be doing. I can't think of her name right now, but we already know she be sitting there stuffing her damn face behind the counter. You sitting there handing me my money, and as you handing me my money, goddamn crumbs of potato chips and shit falling out your hand on top of my hand as you handing me my money. So Rashida basically telling her no food on the floor, ain't no texting on the floor, Ain't no Snapchat, ain't no Instagram, none of that shit on the sales floor. But when you got family working for you, that's what they feel like they can do. They feel like they can just, you know, do what the fuck they want to do because you're a family. That's why a lot of people don't hire family when it comes to business. Because, like I said, family will try to do, you. they'll try to run all over you because they feel like they can. Now, her stepdaughter, Kirk's daughter, of course, she's not there. This is the same one that be there on Instagram and Snapchat and shit. She pops up when she wants to pop up. Apparently, she had a, a, a baby that she had to drop off at the daycare now. Ain't nothing. I understand that you got a baby that you got to drop off at the daycare. But if you had a regular job, okay, a regular job where your manager was not your stepmother, you wouldn't be able, okay, you would have to leave your home a little bit earlier to drop your child off at the daycare, okay? You can't use that as an excuse for being late, but I digress. I don't know if this this child, um, well, she's not a child. She's a grown woman. I don't know if she's a rapper or a singer, but she apparently wants to perform, okay? She wants to perform. Now, I don't know why all of these celebrities, children, feel like they just gotta be out there in the music game, too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Now, Kirk, he popped up in there during the family meeting, and he told his daughter. He said, it's not that I don't support you. It's, that, it's just that I want to protect you because I know how brutal it can be out here in these streets, okay? I know how brutal it can be out here in these music streets. And if you get on... TV or you go somewhere and you're performing and you trash, you already know they're going to blast your ass on the blogs. They're going to blast you on social media, okay? They're going to blast you in the motherfucking reviews that they do at these goddamn shows, okay? So Kirk basically tells her, it's not that I don't support you. It's just that I want to protect you. But he tells her, look, okay, I'll hook you up with some shit. You can come here. You can perform. Do your thing. Just make sure you practice, et cetera, et cetera, because you already know they're going to be brutal. 
So I'm going to be looking out for that shit to see if she actually got some talent. But like I said, I, I don't really understand why you got a lot of these celebrities kids, especially if you're a rapper, if they're a singer. Now, if you got some talent, that's a little bit different. But if you just want to do the shit just because your mom and them doing it. Mm -mm. Jessica Dime decides to set up this little meeting with her, Mimi, and Tierra because she wants to introduce Tierra to Mimi. Even though Mimi already said that any the first the first sight that she sees Tierra or Tommy, she gonna basically go off on the ass because they basically ruined her girlfriend's birthday party. However, Jessica Dime wants them to meet up because she knows that it's not Tierra's fault. The reason why they got into that altercation at this party. So, Tierra comes and she basically wants to, you know, apologize to Mimi for the whole altercation. But she did, she does tell her that it wasn't her fault. Okay, these bitches basically set me up to be fucking ambushed. So, they have this conversation and Mimi tells her, look, I've been where you been, okay? I done been in a fucked up situation with my baby daddy and his new girl, okay? I done been in that situation, so I already know what you're going through. So, Mimi says, you know, stay cool for now. Until later on, maybe later on down the line, maybe they'll have some beef or whatever. But they accepted, you know, uh, Mimi accepted her apology and they moved the fuck on. So Jocelyn meets up with Tommy. Okay, well, you know Tommy um, said when she went to Tierra's job that Jocelyn is her girl. She met her when she was in L.A. and she didn't see no reason to hate you know, Jocelyn, that's her girl, et cetera, et cetera. Now, mind you, remember, Tommy was all cool and cordial and shit with Carly Red and Jessica Dime, okay? She was all cool and cordial with them at this, um, at Chris's birthday party and when they were stalking Tiara at her job. Remember, she was cool with Jessica Dime then. However, now that she's meeting up with the Jocelyn and they're having conversations and shit because, of course, the streets have been talking and now Jocelyn already know the whole situation with Tommy getting into a fight with Tierra and basically Jocelyn talking about she want to spit some game to her and let her know you ain't got to be fighting and shit all the time. So she decides to throw a little bit of shade at Jessica Dime calling her an old piglet bitch and all this type of shit, okay? And basically telling Jocelyn how Jessica Dime was talking shit about her when they were at uh, Tierra job and all this shit because uh, Jocelyn wants to invite Tommy to this album release party but she lets her know that she's going to be inviting some of the other women too. And that's when Tommy decides to throw the shade calling Jessica Dime old piglet bitch and all this type of shit and I'm pretty sure she wouldn't probably say that shit to them motherfucking girl face. Then again she probably will especially if she got Jocelyn behind her low key backing her ass up but I guarantee you okay I guarantee you Jocelyn gonna turn on her motherfucking ass before this season up. Because Jocelyn knows Scrap. She knows uh, Tierra. She knows Tommy. She knows all of this. She knows all of these people because this is Stevie J's nephew. Okay, whether or not it's Stevie J's real nephew, I have no earthly idea and I really don't give a fuck. However, Jocelyn decides to spill some beans, beans to Tommy, basically telling her, I've heard some shit about Scrap. I've heard that, yeah, he playing both of y'all motherfucking ass, okay? And not with no pretty bitch. He got some old ugly ass bitch that been holding him down for years, okay? Some old ugly ass bitch that been holding him down for years. So while you and Tierra fighting over him, he got some old ugly ass woman that been holding him down for years that he would probably dump both of y'all bitches for. Those are Jocelyn's words, not mine. This bitch shaking the table. K. Michelle meets up with Carly Red Girl. They have a little conversation. Irrelevant. Just saying. Irrelevant ass conversation. But this bitch shaking the table. Rashida has a one-on-one -on -one with little Scrappy. Basically, she pops up at his little modeling call or whatever the fuck he's doing. But she pops up there. Basically, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him and let him know, look, you shouldn't even have no beef with us, okay? You shouldn't have no beef with us. I had some shit that I had to do. Look, I'm sorry, et cetera, et cetera. But, but you know, me and Kirk are one. So if you're going to be my brother, we're going to be cool. You have to understand that you can't have no beef with my husband and be cool with me. So she invites him to an event that Kirk is having so he can pop up and maybe they can squash their beef. So right now, apparently, Rashida, Lil Scrappy, and Kirk are probably cool. Now, he hasn't met up with, with Kirk yet, but she invited him to Kirk's event. So I'm pretty sure they're probably going to squash whatever beef they got when he meets up with Kirk at his event. So Scrappy... Rashida and Kirk, cool now. 
Scrap, Scrappy, all this motherfucking shit. This shit is confusing, bitch. But Scrap, okay, Scrap, the motherfucker with the long ass motherfucking hair, he's trying to get his mother KK to meet up with Tierra because Tierra, you know, she has a child. And especially if this motherfucker go to jail, you know, I'm pretty sure she's still gonna wanna see her grandson. However, she doesn't want her grandchild being around KK by herself because especially if you hate me, I don't want you putting shit in my child's head, you know, trying to turn my child against me. So Tierra wants Scrap to set up a meeting with her and KK so they can sit down, discuss their differences, and move the fuck on past this shit. But of course, when Scrap tries to meet up with KK and basically ask him if he want to sit down, have a sit down conversation with Tiara, she tells him, look, son, I love you. I love you to death. I will die for you, okay? I'll do anything for you, but I can give a fuck about that bitch Tiara because she feels like Tiara is the reason why, you know, she got caught by the police and the reason why she almost got sent to prison. So she don't want to have shit to do with Tierra. She don't want to have no conversation with Tierra. Nothing. Now, Scrap feels some type of way about that because, of course, Tierra already told him, you know, I need to have a sit-down conversation with your mother or and you need to, you know, get this other bitch uh, Tommy out of the motherfucking picture or you're not going to see your son no more. Now, I think that's some fucked up shit, okay? I do think it's some fucked up shit for you to sit there and tell this man you're not going to allow him to see his child unless he does this, 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 and this. You don't give nobody those, those types of ultimatums, okay? Granted, you can tell him, you ain't finna lay in my bed no more. You ain't finna get no more of this good-ass punani. But as far as telling this man, you ain't gonna see your child no more unless you get rid of this bitch, you can tell him, don't bring my child around this bitch, okay? You can tell him, you can come over here to see my child, but I don't want you having my child around her. I can understand you doing that, but telling him flat out that he can't see his child, I think that's fucked up. Now, I'm here with KK when she told him, if you got a woman that's telling you you can't see your child, you need to K your ass on down into the courthouse and tell them folks, look, this bitch trying to keep me away from my child. I ain't here for that shit. So I'm here for KK when she says that shit, but I think she should have probably been the bigger person. At least sat down and had a conversation with this girl. But she told him no. He felt some type of way, got up, cooked, kicked the motherfucking chair over, and walked on out the motherfucking door. Now, I low-key don't think that shit right there was scripted. I really do think that Scrap wants his mother and his baby mother to sit down and have a conversation, but I do think KK just ain't here for the shit. I don't think Mona wrote that shit into the script, though. Bitch, Jocelyn, messy ass Hernandez meets up with Carly Red. Now, Carly Red, girl, when I tell you Carly Red looking like she is happy down a bug in a motherfucking rug. She thinks Jocelyn's meeting up with her to make up with a girl. You can clearly tell that, that, that Carly Red really want to be Jocelyn's friend, even though Jocelyn and goddamn bush you in the face with a motherfucking rose. She done whipped your ass a couple of times or attempted to whip your ass a couple of times, and you still want to be this snake ass girl's friend. Like I said, I like Jocelyn because she's entertaining, but I ain't no way in the fucking hell I would want to be this chick's friend because she is a motherfucking, when I tell you she is a bomb waiting to motherfucking explode, okay? So Carly Red sitting there talking to her and she's feeling some type of way and of course the whole time Jocelyn sitting over there with her goddamn drink that and Carly Red know Jocelyn being shady, okay? Because already, okay, already, Tommy done already put Jocelyn up on game that Carly Red been talking shit about her with Jessica Dime. Now, of course, Carly Red is not going to admit to this shit. She told Jocelyn that she was defending her against people who were talking about her. However, of course, Jocelyn don't believe that shit. She don't believe that shit. So she, so she told Carly Red. If you don't want what I got in this motherfucking envelope to make it onto the blogs, the shit I know about you to make it onto the blogs, what you need to do is keep my motherfucking name out of your mouth. So the whole time Carly Red sitting there having this meeting with Jocelyn thinking that this girl finna make up with her, the whole time this bitch just showed up to tell her, keep my name out of your motherfucking mouth, bitch, or I'm gonna put your ass on the blogs. So that's what the fuck popped off in blackmail, y'all. This, like I said, this is some ghetto ratchet ass motherfucking shit, but I am here for it. I am so glad that Stevie J and Jocelyn are back in the motherfucking house because to me, they are the entertainment on this uh, show in my personal opinion. True enough, these King people, they got a whole lot of other shit going on with, you know, Tierra and Tommy and Scrap. That shit is entertaining too, but to me, Jocelyn and Stevie J brings the entertainment, so I'm here for this motherfucking shit. I cannot wait for tonight's episode. I will be back to give y'all that motherfucking tea, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about this here particular episode and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.